capitalism is just human nature. That's why it's the best system. We've all heard it being said before, mostly in the context of someone suggesting that capitalism isn't perfect. Take any video talking about socialism, communism, anarchism or anything that is neoliberal capitalism and someone in the comments will tell you that it won't work because capitalism is natural. But is it? I don't think so. But let's start off by asking ourselves, what is that even supposed to mean? Let's type the statement, capitalism is natural, into Google and see what it suggests, since that's obviously what people are thinking about. There we have it. Capitalism is natural selection. And that's an actual argument used by many supporters of capitalism for why it's a natural system. Since capitalism includes natural selection, it follows the laws of Darwin, which makes it natural. On the surface, this idea seems to hold water. Capitalism famously takes companies and individuals, ideally as many as possible, and makes them compete on the free market. They compete for customers if they're companies and for jobs if they're individuals. So everyone is constantly competing, which is natural and the best way society can be run. Right? Well, I'd argue it's definitely not the best system. Actually, a lot of resources are wasted on the constant competition. Big corporations have to invest huge sums into advertising in order to be able to compete. Ha! You may say. This is an advantage of competition because it means that the companies have to constantly innovate and create new and better products for the people. This is a very common argument as well and as luck would have it, I already made an entire video on why the free market doesn't cause innovation. In short, it doesn't because adverts are cheaper. So competition is expensive and usually it doesn't even produce innovation. At this point you may already be questioning why we even bother with competition and the usual answer isn't that we use it because it's the best system but because it's the best current system we have. That's a big difference there. People rarely argue that capitalism is the best system to ever be able to exist. They prefer to argue that it's the best system we have. This goes hand in hand with the fact that every five year old already knows that socialism supposedly killed at least one petabyte of the people in the USSR. Of course that's not really true and I made a video on that one as well. So the current argument goes, capitalism is the best system because socialism is bad, because it kills people and at least capitalism doesn't do that. There are two problems with this statement. One is that the deaths caused by socialism are usually greatly exaggerated as I mentioned before and the other is that capitalism isn't a perfect system either. Many people die each year because capitalism isn't able to support them. And yes, of course I've made a video on that as well. And with the argument part of the statement refuted, there isn't anything left besides capitalism is the best system. Also this argument assumes that there are no other systems than socialism and capitalism, which is a little odd considering capitalism as we know it wasn't invented until the late 1770s. But I just noticed that I've gotten a little off topic. Back to the point. Is capitalism natural because it features competition? Well, not really. Of course, competition is very common in nature, but oftentimes it doesn't take place between members of the same species. For example, plants will intentionally avoid the leaves of other plants of the same genome so they don't need to waste energy competing for nutrients or sunlight. This can be seen all over the animal kingdom as well. Fish move in swarms because that's the safest for them. They don't invest energy into changing their color so that predators will eat the other fish first. Meerkats socially bring up the young and hell, even humans cooperate like that. Think of the Thanksgiving meal or your local equivalent. One person makes the food and everyone gets to eat it. People don't fight for it or compete. People cooperate and everyone profits. And of course in exchange the other people around the table will do the housework. But what they won't do is ask to be paid for that. Let's take a step back and look at what humans are. Not specifically now but what they were made for. Back in the environment of evolutionary adaption, the EEA. It was the last time humans evolved naturally. If we want to determine if capitalism is human nature, it wouldn't make sense to look at what this nature is. Of course it's hard to determine what people were like back in the day, since we can't ask them and they wouldn't invent writing for a few thousand years. What we can do though is look at behaviors that are universal around the world, across cultures. This way we avoid accidentally concluding that women must naturally want to wear skirts just because some cultures do that. A core feature of humanity is the highly developed social ability. People are incredibly good at learning and remembering faces and keeping track of many social relationships. These relationships are incredibly important to humans, which is why prolonged solitary confinement is considered a very severe punishment, even torture in every culture. And it's outlawed in many countries for that exact reason. So the first thing is that humans are social. The next one is that humans are community oriented. Those might sound similar, but hear me out. Being social means wanting to be around other members of the same species. Being community oriented means considering those other people as important enough to invest energy into them even if there is no direct benefit. For example, zebras are social. They live in herds and aren't happy alone. 
but they give the herd no second thought. They don't have friends and they wouldn't do anything to help the members of the herd. Humans on the other hand do care about each other. The main sign is that during the time humans were hunters and gatherers, women were tasked with protecting the kids while the men were out hunting ducks or something like that. And what did the men do when coming back? They shared the things they had hunted with the women and children, even though it meant that they had less food. So we gather that humans are social and community oriented. The next one is expansionists. Humans always expand into any available space and they would also conquer each other all the time. Humans are incredibly aggressive. Expansionist also refers to personal and technological advancement. Since the beginning of time, humans always innovated and tried to improve their lives. First spears and fire, then wheels and boats. And this is only possible due to the fourth and last point, intelligence. Humans are the smartest species there is on this planet. So that's it, social, community oriented, expansionist and smart. Those are the things which are natural for humans to be. Now, you may already wonder where does capitalism fit into that, and the neoliberals will readily tell you, capitalism allows people to expand as much as they want. Anyone who works hard can get more for themselves, that's the beauty of capitalism. And alright, in theory it does that, but in praxis your ability to expand is hampered by the fact that other people already expanded a lot and there isn't an infinite amount of resources, which means that not everyone can expand and that everyone who does expand must take it from someone else. You can't buy gold without taking it from someone and you can't make more money than your body produces without taking it from someone else. That someone cannot expand then, can they? But for the hell of it, let's assume that capitalism really does allow people to improve their lives if they just work hard and long enough. Does this make it the most natural system? Let's look at the rest of the human features and see how well they do in capitalism. Let's start with smarts. Humans are smart, but not naturally so. People need education in order to be able to use their intelligence. If Newton was born into poverty, he wouldn't have been able to invent calculus. So, since capitalism is so natural, it would seem obvious that it has to allow everyone who wants to, to become as smart as they want to be. Since people naturally want to be educated, it wouldn't be natural to deny them that. And I'm afraid capitalism is really bad at educating people. Don't get me wrong, it rewards educated people by giving them loads of money, but it doesn't make people educated. There are private schools and universities, but they don't educate most people. They only educate those who already have enough money to pay for it. So capitalism doesn't structurally allow everyone to become smart. This is the reason why education is almost never left to the private sector and why it's done by the state almost everywhere. Capitalism does not support the natural human desire for knowledge, but Hey, that's fine, we still have two more natural behaviors and we still have to decide if capitalism supports those. Next, let's look at social. Does capitalism allow people to be social? Well, that's a tough question. I could bring up the fact that having social relationships at work is usually very hard because you're constantly encouraged to compete with your co-workers. Or I could bring up how my previous employer didn't even allow me to talk to the colleagues I sat next to except during the lunch break. But let's take another approach. Being social means different things to different people. For some it may mean being with their children, for others it may be hanging out with friends or just working with people you like and talking to them as you work. No matter which one of those is your interpretation of being social, capitalism sort of prohibits all of them. Because of the competition between you and your co-workers, it becomes hard to create meaningful connections at work. And because you have to work 8 to 12 hours a day, you can't spend time with your family or friends if you want to. That's directly opposed to what humans naturally want. Of course, someone is gonna show up and tell me that we need to work that many hours because if we don't, we wouldn't produce enough for everyone. That's not really true. As I explained in my video titled why the free market is inefficient, the free market produces not as much as we need, but way more. Earth produces food for 10 billion people while there are 7.5 billion people, which means that one quarter of the work put into farming and distributing food is wasted labor and time. So capitalism is bad for our social lives by forcing us to work longer than necessary and even obstructing social relationships which might form at the workplace. At least it allows people to be community oriented, right? Well, I'm afraid not. Just think about it. Does capitalism reward supporting the people who need help? Is it a financially good idea to use your money to feed the hungry or clothe the poor or even support your children? No, it's not. It's never a good idea to spend your money on someone else. That's why people are having so few children nowadays. Children cost a lot of money and nobody got time for that. And that's why the state usually takes over care of the people who need to be taken care of, like people with disability or homeless and unemployed people. Right now, along with the rise of neoliberal feminism, raising children is becoming more and more often a task of the state as well. This is because even someone who would want to stay at home, do housework and care for their children would not be able to do so because nowadays the cost of living is too high to support a family with only one breadgiver. Both parents have to work nowadays 
and that is the result of late stage capitalism. And that's assuming a classical two parent household. Nowadays, nobody can afford to leave one adult who is perfectly capable of working, staying at home all day. Or instead, it's a cultural Marxist, feminist, leftist, Jewish, trans, Muslim plot to destroy Western civilization using affordable healthcare. Still not sure both are equally plausible. So, I'm afraid capitalism doesn't support any of the basic desires of humanity very well. The closest one is expansion, because capitalism sometimes gives the ability to improve their lives to some people in some conditions. And this is where neoliberals will tell me that capitalism might not do everything perfectly, but it's the best system we have. If we look back at our Google search, the second result was capitalism is more natural. More natural than what exactly? Oh come on, we both know the answer. More natural than socialism. Honestly, most people's head would explode if you ask them to name more than two economic systems. So, let's look at that. Is capitalism more natural than socialism? Well, it's hard to say because socialism, as it is used today, means a lot of things to a lot of people. Barely anyone means Soviet socialism anymore either. So, for the purposes of this video, my socialism will include workplace democracies for production, people's councils for distribution, and a small state for maintaining infrastructure, education, healthcare, social services, and for enforcing laws. Now, this isn't what I think the perfect society would look like, but it's realistic, so let's go for it. We've got these desires, let's see, social. Would this socialism be better for that than the current system? Maybe a little bit. If the workers ran the business, they would probably not keep each other from talking when working, and they wouldn't force themselves to produce too many resources and spend more time at work than necessary either. Also, the workers wouldn't be forced to compete all the time, which would be nice. Next one is community-oriented, and it's a tricky one. It's hard to allow people to invest work into their community and reward it. In my social system, that's not done. You could have the state pay stay-at-home parents, but that would give the state a lot of power, which is fine if you're into that, but a lot of my subscribers are anarchists who are probably already angrily typing about what a tanky I am for including a state-run police force in my example of a socialist society. And they probably won't agree with giving the state that much power, and honestly, I don't either. There are some communes out there in which everyone has to do a certain amount of work a week and housework and caring for children is included. So it's definitely possible to reward working for the community, but that isn't easy to scale up and as I mentioned before, my socialism doesn't include it. We will skip this one because it takes the longest to say and go too smart. Does my socialism allow people to educate themselves? Yes, I have included a state-run education system and social services after all. Anyone could get into a uni and become a scientist if they wanted to. That need is fulfilled. And the last one is expansionists. It's a common critique of socialism that it doesn't work because it doesn't incentivize work and only capitalism does. This need is what people mean when they say that capitalism is more natural than socialism. This one thing is everything it holds on to and it really shouldn't. There is this idea in popular culture that socialism means equal wages for all. That the doctor working 100 hours a week would earn as much as someone who doesn't work. I'm afraid that's not how it works, not only in my socialism, in which wages are determined by the worker co-ops themselves, but also in the actual centralized Stalinist state that we call the Soviet Union. The USSR always paid its workers for each piece they produced, and once they were over their quota, they got a bonus for every piece they made. The idea that socialism means equal pay seems to have been made up for propaganda purposes, as far as I can tell. And since in my socialism, workers are still somewhat paid like in capitalism, it allows people to work for more. It allows people to innovate and it allows them to improve their lives. And because other people don't get an unfair advantage via exploitation or inheritance, there is an actual chance to do so as well. So that's it. My socialism ticks three out of four boxes while capitalism only ticks one. It would seem like it's not the most natural system now, is it? So now we've looked at the argument, looked at what people naturally want and concluded that socialism would be better at giving it than capitalism is. Of course, there will be someone saying that capitalism is natural because during the Bronze Age people already traded and they did so ever since. But I would just say, trade has nothing to do with capitalism. Just because people have always traded doesn't mean that private property and wage labor are the natural human condition. Also, of course, socialism would still allow for trade, so that's an argument. But now that I'm done with that, I'd like to invalidate the entire premise along with my entire argument and conclusion. I don't think it matters what's natural. Even if capitalism was the most natural system there is, I don't think that that's a good enough reason to keep it. I mean, if we go by nature, everyone who wears glasses would have to die because that's what would happen in nature. We have advanced beyond the natural order and even if capitalism was natural, which it is not, I still think that replacing it with the system that potentially allows us to save 25% of our time and work and which would give everyone democratic control over the place they spend their entire working lives at would be a good idea. And on that note, thanks for watching. This is the end card, please like and subscribe. 
Always remember, if you like this video, then your friends might like it as well. So why not send them the link? Thanks for watching. See ya.